So it's harvest season. We're going to head back to Chudley's now where Frankie Flowers is ready to help us create harvest inspired planters to keep our homes festive for fall. And Frankie, I actually look forward to this every season when we do this because the way you show us how to do it will save us a lot of money and also looks really good. So uh, yeah, how do we start? We start with some of the container basics. You know, when we are thinking about containers, we always got to make sure we're selecting a container that still has drainage. Because even if these plants are too wet, too long, that's the key is we need to create drainage. I'm going to plant one a little bit later on in this harvest basket. And you can see to create drainage, all I've done is taken a pot, flipped it upside down, popped it in there. That creates some additional drainage and also takes away from some space of soil. So I don't need to use as much soil. Uh, we need to use a potting soil, of course, which is just the potting mix that we have right here. And and then it's all about those plants and it's those plants that make it look fall because we want to theme them as fall and when we're selecting plants we got to remind ourselves that there's frost there's winds there could even be freezing rain so how do we select the plants that are going to last during the fall season till winter sets in yeah that's really what we have to get into now i love the tip about putting that overturned uh, smaller planter inside the planter because you don't want to be using soil that you don't necessarily need in there. It's going to look more bountiful. You're giving it height, so that's yeah. a really, really good tip. And then while you're putting that potting mix in, we're going to talk about the yeah. actual autumn plants that would work in a situation like this. Yeah, so with autumn plants, we got to think about the harvest season. We got to think about color. We got to think about frost tolerance as well. So the number one autumn plant that's out there, of course, is the chrysanthemum. That fall yeah. garden mom, you're seeing them everywhere from garden centers to grocery stores. They're for sale all over the place. We can also look for things that have interesting foliage. And this is uh, actually a perennial, which is a coral bells, that has that almost, that kind of same mimicking the color that we have here in the fall leaves. This, these fall leaves are actually faux, so I'm okay with taking a little bit of faux, which I call fake, and mixing them in. But as well, think about using things like even some lettuce plants. You can see that some garden centers now have lettuce bowls, so we can incorporate those in. Uh, using some flowering cabbage, of course, or fantastic kale as well, which are fantastic for you. You want to clean those leaves up as well. But all those different things that really resemble the colors of fall, so the oranges, the yellows, even the purple, the red, all those foliage colors that's what we're trying to mimic inside a container. Okay, now I know you're gonna show us, you're gonna use your little, ma mm -hmm. your, your magic actually, because we wanna know how to make it look balanced, how to have that perfect like symmetry that you have, or maybe you don't want the symmetry. So why don't you walk us through some of the set steps to building up a good planter? Yeah, so let's take a look at this one quickly and then we'll build one in front of you. So we have the faux leaves that are here, which are our thriller. So that's going to give us that nice little height that's there. The garden mom with the coral bells is your filler. And then we have a periwinkle, which is a spiller. And I put some accessories in there as well, which just kind of add a little bit of that fall flavor. You know, I can't put a full pumpkin in there, but I could put little accessories of pumpkin. So let's go back to the thrill for some thrill, some drama, some height. We could even use corn stalks or a nice beautiful ornamental grass. This is a purple panaceum, which is just easy to go. Boom, we're gonna pop that guy in. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go with a different color theme and we're gonna do something like a beautiful fall garden mum. That fall garden mum's just gonna pop them right in, put it off to the side. So this is what I call as our filler as well. Pretty. So we're gonna pop that guy in there. And I like that you went a little with bit the of sort of like a dark there. pink, like it's a nice bright pink. Yeah, and just to add to that, I'm thinking foliage again. So this is a coral bell. So what I could do with this, let's say I want to cheat a little bit because I want to use this in my planter, but then later on what I want to do is I want to use it in the garden. So I'm going to plant it pot and all right in the container. So then after what I can do is slide this out of the container, pop it in my garden, it's going to come back, and I can then all of a sudden utilize those costs that are there. What I'm going to add as well is, in life, we always need a little bit of time. And time, <laughs> as a herb, you get that? I get it. You got that, eh? <laughs> yeah, so time as a herb is a fantastic little spiller that's there, but also it has the ability to be frost tolerant at the same time. So we get a little bit of foliage in there. Then, it's so easy when we add in, you can see the colors that we have there. So we have the purple and the purple in the center. We start to add in some flowering cabbage and or kale. So with that, we can just pop a few of those plants that are in there just to kind of add that little side color that's in there and the foliage all of a sudden is changing. And then you're gonna to say to yourself, but Frank, you left kind of like a gaping hole in the center that's here. Uh huh. Right, like there's this hole right here. What are we gonna right do? What are we gonna do with the hole? You know, in life, everybody says, 
you need some apples, right? <laughs> so I took some apples, popped them on. We're just going to pop a little apple right in there. Oop, it's not all the way through. But nice. there's a word of warning, Tracy, with apples because yeah. you know what apples are? They're food. Mm -hmm. And you know what food does? Mm, bring food. I'm just going to. Yeah, so what we have to do is we really got to be careful out there that some of those animals that are out there that we're not, sometimes we can use food in, we can use even corn stalks and we can use apples, uh, others, but if we have the winter season that kicks in, also those guys can rot out and smell. Sometimes the flowering cabbage can do that, yeah. but sometimes they'll attract animals to the area. But at the end, all you're trying to do is to add some color, have some fun. I want to talk about the, the apple trees behind you because you mentioned something interesting before yeah. we even got on camera. They're shorter. They're dwarf apple trees. Why is yeah. that? So, you know, when it went to apple picking overall, now what happens is labor costs, and you're trying to figure out how to create an apple farm that's going to be a little bit more efficient, and even for when you pick your own. So with the semi-dwarfs to dwarf apples, you really don't need that tall of a ladder. So they're easier to pick. The apples are a little bit lower. You can see that they're in nice lines. There is also good airflow around them, so you get less disease. They're healthier plants overall. Uh. So that's why now, even when you go to buy an apple tree at a garden center, you're going to see a semi-dwarf or dwarf. They're just easier to pick so for the vertically challenged people like me. <laughs> and for people. the kids. And for the kids, right? <laughs> yeah. You just lift them yeah. up. Frankie, yeah. thank you yeah. so much for that. The planter <laughs> looks fantastic. Really, really good. You can find thank all of his you. tips up on our website, cityline.tv.